There are seven perfect PlayStation 3 games. Now you're probably thinking the same thing your mum was when I took my underwear off. How on earth do I measure that? Oh my God. Well, like your mum, let me guide you on a journey of discovery and disappointment. There is this thing called the Famitsu 40, which is taken very seriously in the games industry. We're going to look at the seven PS3 games that actually earned this much coveted award. Don't worry if you're some sort of dirty Fortnite gaming casual, I'll explain it. Famitsu is a Japanese gaming magazine which has been going since 1986 and it's highly respected. Their game reviewing process is pretty unique. Instead of just one idiotic IGN reviewer... Um, like, um, but like... Famitsu has four people that actually know what they're doing and give a game a mark out of ten. If all four give ten out of ten, then right there you have yourself a Famitsu 40 award. Only 29 games have ever got this award, so let's see the seven of them that were on the PS3. The first PS3 game to get the perfect score was Metal Gear Solid 4. Now, people act like this is some sort of hidden, locked away Metal Gear game that's just impossible to play now. But it's like £5 on eBay. You can even emulate it now if you have a PC. So I don't know what everyone keeps crying about. MGS4 is not getting an official re-release anytime soon. You know how badly Konami botched the Master Collection. They can't even get Metal Gear Solid 2 working decently on anything under a PlayStation 5. So what chance have they got bringing out Metal Gear 4 again? If you want something that resembles a rare Metal Gear Solid game from this era, Try to find Metal Gear Solid Touch for iPhone. That was delisted years ago. It's not very good, but it's more of a challenge to obtain than Metal Gear Solid 4. But anyway, people do like Metal Gear Solid 4, and clearly so did Famitsu. Probably because you get to actually play as Snake in this one. Don't get mugged off with hands put up with that breakdancing weirdo Raiden. Famitsu gave it a perfect score, but I personally wouldn't go that far. I mean, it's pretty fun to play. It's got that classic MGS humour in it, but it's from that era where every artist just went berserk with brown and grey. I don't think this was worth the perfect score at the time. And like always, people just get caught up in the Kojima hype. Yeah, it is good, but it's not Snatcher. I don't need to introduce this game because you've played Skyrim before and probably bought it on about six different consoles. I've got it four times. I don't even know why I bother with a PS5 version, but it does mean I can show you how rubbish the PS3 version looks compared to it. Skyrim was the first ever non-Japanese game to get a perfect score in Famitsu, and they were actually playing the PS3 version. Probably because no one in Japan actually owns an Xbox, which isn't surprising considering the state of the advertising Microsoft did over there. Come on, Microsoft, what the hell were you thinking with this? The other thing Famitsu didn't do, nor did any other gaming outlet for that matter, was play the PS3 version for any decent length of time before farting out a review. Because if they had, uh oh, there's a game destroying bug that cripples the game's performance once your save file goes over 5 meg. Journalists must have just made it to the Riverwood Trader and just went, yep, 10 out of 10. To be fair, this isn't something we should just lay squarely at the feet of games journalists, because clearly Bethesda never tested the game either, although their games are known for Starship Troopers levels of bugs. But even though this is the worst version of Skyrim money can buy, yes, even worse than the Switch version, I still enjoy it, even if in almost every single battle I manage to, without fail, continually go in and out of creeper mode. This is Final Fantasy XIII 2, the game that any sane person would have called Final Fantasy XIV. Actually, talking about Final Fantasy XIV, that game, just like GTA V, has been on the PS3, PS4 and PS5. But unlike GTA V, no one's complaining on the internet that Square Enix keeps releasing the same game over and over. Is it because there hasn't been another GTA game since V, but there has been other Final Fantasy games? If that's the case, Netflix is on PS3, 4 and PS5, but we still don't have a Netflix 2, have we? But we do have a Final Fantasy 13 2, and Famitsu gave it a perfect score, just like they did with Final Fantasy 12 on the PS2. The difference is that Final Fantasy 12 is a good game, 
and Final Fantasy XIII 2 is not. I mean, so long as you can get past the opening beach area, it's not that bad, actually. It starts off well with all those battles at the night and the angry fire portal boss thing. Even if you skip the tutorials, the way the first few battles are set up, the combat system gently transitions from press auto to win to press other options to not die. Everything just grinds to a halt the next in-game day when you have to continuously traverse around the same area over and over for pointless objectives. The game does get better, but when you have to play through a chunk of bad to get to the good, it's not a perfect game. I now have to deal with a frightening prospect of talking about a game that actually deserves a Famitsu Perfect score. That's Yakuza 5. All the post-PS2 Yakuza games have been fantastic, especially Yakuza 0. That's incredible. Nice. All the way up to the point when they started calling the Western versions like a dragon and started pumping them out twice a year. Who's making these games now? Is it Sega or EA? But Yakuza 5 is a brilliant game, although I'd advise playing the PS4 version now because why would you not want to play at 60 frames per second? Plus you'll actually want to go to the club Sega and play the Taiko no Tatsujin because the input latency has been sorted out. But if you are playing the PS3 version, it's still great fun. And in Yakuza 5, they added driving into the game. Want to know how good the driving in this game is? Well, the people that made Yakuza 5 also made Daytona USA, and that's all you need to know about how good the driving is in this game. You know what else is really good in Yakuza 5? The toys you get from the UFO machines. They're much better than the normal chaff that gets stuck in them. But the machines where you get the Hatsune Miku figures in, there's this stupid rod thing that you have to get within a millimetre of the target to actually win. Famitsu were right to give this a perfect score, and I'm sure they did because of the game's quality, and not because when you walk into an M store, you can pick up a copy of Famitsu and look at the cover. I don't even want to talk about this game. It's rubbish. It shouldn't be on the list, but I don't know what possessed Famitsu to give it a perfect score. It's also the only game on this list I don't actually own, so I downloaded a demo version of the PS5 remaster just to get some footage of it. Didn't even bother moving my PS5 over to my PC to capture it with the Elgato. I just used the built-in PS5 recording feature, which is why there's all that copyright nonsense in the text in the corner. Why do Japanese firms do this? It happens a lot if you record Japanese these PS5 games with the built-in recorder. This doesn't mean anything to anyone. It's pointless, just like this game. I'm not surprised to see this get a perfect score. People might be upset that this has been re-released just as many times as Final Fantasy XIV, but it's a great game. You might have also guessed that you're looking at the PS5 version here. That's because while I was recording the JoJo footage, I thought, screw it, I'll capture some footage of GTA while I have the PS5 on. I have this game on as many different PlayStation consoles as I do Skyrim. I'm not going to apologise for that. I think GTA is a great game. Maybe by the time I finish this video, Rockstar would have shown the GTA 6 reveal trailer. Although that does mean all the YouTube grifters were going to overdrive with a hundred things you missed videos. They're already pushing out utter nonsense already. Like this guy who's claiming he's got the trailer. IGN doesn't have it. GameSpot doesn't have it. But this guy, this idiot right here, somehow managed to get the world exclusive for the biggest video game release in a decade. I didn't talk about GTA 5 in a section of this video which was about GTA 5 because I know I'm not speaking to idiots who need to have a game that everyone in the world has already played explained to them. But then you get scum like this who treat their audience like clowns just to try and pull a fast one over them. The last game is Metal Gear Solid 5, which gives us a pleasing circularity to this video by finishing with the series we started with. But now it's seven years on from Metal Gear Solid 4, and this one's actually really good. You're looking at the PS4 version here because that's the one I have and probably the version most of you have too. And that's because Metal Gear 5 came out on the same day in late 2015 for both PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. The only reason you'd have the PS3 version is because you got it for free. <laughs> But 
even if you do only have the PS3 version, Metal Gear 5 is a fantastic game. And I only really discovered this when I made this video. I had this sitting on my hard drive as part of my digital to-do pile for years. I had to play it to get footage for this video now, and I feel gutted I've waited this long to play it. Maybe you are like me and you have this on PlayStation, but you still haven't got round to trying it out. If that is you, let me tell you the following. You should definitely give this a go right now, even if you're in the middle of a different game. Even though Metal Gear is normally a very story-heavy title, that doesn't really matter here. Because of the way it's structured, you can do just a couple of missions, and then not touch it again for months, then pick it right back up where you left off without feeling like you're lost or you need to start again. Essentially, you pick a mission to do from the list, and all the missions are located in one really big battlefield. Don't worry, it's big enough for the different areas of the battlefield to not feel like it's the same bit of map that's just been copy pasted a million times. Some missions have you stealing intel, some you have to kill a dude, some you have to save a dude, some you have to take over an area. Pretty much all the missions can be done in whichever way you want to do them. So if you want to stealth the way in, you can do that. If you want to take your time, flank the mission area and just snipe people out, that's an option as well. Although you might just want to run in guns blazing, you can try that if you want. It's super open-ended and you can get lots of different guns and items to go through the game any way you want to at whatever pace you'd like you can easily dip in and out at your own leisure but the main draw is actually controlling snake and using all the guns and stuff because it all feels really good to play the whole thing is just really fun and you can tell it's crafted by absolute experts even if you're busy right now with something else just have a quick go just to see what you think honestly do it now oh and that's all the famitsu per Perfect 40 games. Bye.